You need to have a VPN because those types of websites are censored in China. It was not fun. <laughs> it was just wild. Hey guys, so today I wanted to film a video about what you should know before going to China. So the first thing you should know before going to China is to download your VPN. If you want to be able to access any Western or American websites, you need to have a VPN because those types of websites are censored in China. The one that I used was Astral. So having a VPN is definitely needed if you want to be able to access those sites or anything that has to do with Google. Also, if you don't download your VPN before you go to China, once you're in China, it's really difficult to download it if you're not a little bit tech savvy or know how to do it so make sure it's all downloaded make sure it works before you even land in China number two would be to download and authenticate your WeChat and Alipay basically WeChat and Alipay are the two biggest forms of digital payment that China takes and it's super helpful if you have them and you're able to use them Sometimes after downloading WeChat, it does take some time to authenticate. For mine, when I was in China, it took almost two weeks to authenticate. If your WeChat and Alipay aren't authenticated, then you're actually not able to use it as a form of payment. You're not able to put money onto it or transfer money or pay for things. Make sure that everything works before you get to China because it can be a little bit nerve-wracking if you are kind of stuck there and you don't have any money. Um, there are still some places in China that take cash. I feel most places would still take cash if you had it, but I feel digital payment is the easiest and best way to pay for things in China. Also with WeChat and Alipay, you're able to rent the bikes or sometimes scooters in certain cities as long as they're authenticated. And another app that I would recommend to have is Meituan. So with Meituan, you're able to have things delivered to you, even to the hotel. You're able to order food. Um, you're able to call a taxi. You're able to basically do anything. <laughs> Meituan is an amazing app to have. So I feel like if you have WeChat, Alipay, and Meituan, you're basically set um, for paying for things, ordering things taking cabs and all of that in China. Number three would be don't go during a Chinese national holiday unless you want to see a lot of people and a lot of crowds. <laughs> so in China, they have national holidays where a lot of people are on holiday at the exact same time. So that is when everybody travels to go see their family or to go see tourist sites that they've been wanting to see. So during that time, it is so busy. All of the tourist sites are packed with people. It's hard to get train tickets. It's hard to get plane tickets. Jung and I have traveled during those times and I highly would not recommend it unless that's your vibe is being stuck in a crowd. And <laughs> that is not my vibe, but yeah, I would definitely recommend to visit China when it is not a Chinese national holiday so that you're able to see everything you want to see and it's easier to book train tickets and plane tickets and you don't have to worry about being stuck somewhere because you can't get a train ticket. For example, Jung and I went to Shanghai when it was Dragon Boat Festival because we thought it would be fun and it... Shanghai is always amazing, but during a national holiday, it was not fun. <laughs> it was just wild. I feel like I've never seen that amount of people in one place. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that many people in one place, and at one point I was like, I need to get out of here. It is just too much. So speaking of Shanghai, I think it's a super cool city and you definitely have to see it. Beijing, Shenzhen, all of the big cities are really cool. But I highly recommend that you also go to the rural areas or to the smaller cities. I feel when most people go to China, they always go to the bigger cities. And while they are really cool cities with amazing technology and all of that, I think that the rural areas of China just have such a charm to them. I just love it so much. Like when Jung and I lived in China, we had the most fun in rural China. 
Jung is from a smaller city called Hanzhong in Shanxi province and we always go there. It's my favorite city to go to. There's lots of rural spaces around it that we go and play at and it's just so fun to go to that part of China. When we lived in Nanjing, a lot of our vacations were actually in the rural parts around Nanjing and we had an amazing time. We went to see some really cute art cities and went to stay on some ranches and resorts. We also went to go stay at some hot springs. I think it's just really cool to experience those parts of China and it's just different from the bigger cities. So I can feel like I'm losing some light here. So this will be my last one. If you guys like this video, definitely let me know and I can definitely do a part two of what you should know before going to China. So the last thing that you should know before going to China is some basic Chinese. I feel like wherever you go travel, you should always know some of the basic phrases in that language. I think it just makes things easier and I feel like it's just a polite thing to do is if you're visiting another country to actually put in some effort to knowing a bit about their language and culture. So yeah, I think if you know some basic Chinese, it can really help you and kind of build that rapport with people, um, build those relationships with people, and yeah, I think you'll have a better time. If you don't know Chinese well enough to have conversations and you feel like you'll definitely need extra help, you should definitely have a translating app um, some of them do not work without a VPN, so I would check that before you go. Make sure that you're able to use those translator apps in China. Also, if you're stuck and you need a translator app that works in China, your Alipay actually works as a translator app. Um, you can take pictures and it'll translate what is there for you. So that works as well. Also, WeChat is a great translator. So if you're having a conversation with somebody, you're able to translate the conversation and vice versa. So if you wrote to them in English, they're also able to translate your English into Chinese. It's not the most accurate, but I feel if you're in a pinch and you need something, it can work. <laughs> One of my favorite translators is actually ChatGPT. I think it does an excellent job translating. It even gets like the the cultural references and I love using ChatGPT for translating. The problem is it's hard to use in China if you don't have a VPN. Even with a VPN, it can be a little bit hard to use or it's a little bit slow. But if you do have a great Wi-Fi connection and your VPN is really strong and you're able to use ChatGPT, I think it is a great option. So thank you guys for watching my video. I hope these tips can help you out. If you have any questions, definitely leave them below. And like I said, if you want to see another video on what you should know before you go to China, I would love to make a part two for you guys. Thanks for watching. Have fun in China. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh,